Uh, I'm going to talk about um, the technique in five minutes time. So the success in scaphoid fracture surgery depends on the surgeon, training, dedication, patience, and attention to detail. Second is the infrastructure. I should have a dedicated hand fixation system, implants, low torque gun, and a good image intensifier. Patient compliance and hand therapies. And there are five principles. I respect the soft tissue, skin, tendon, nerve, respect the biology, do no harm, stable fixation to allow early mobilization. The scaphoid fracture fixation options are ola or dorsal, open or percutaneous, and using a variety of implants. My choice is dorsal, percutaneous, headless compression screw. So what is my indication for dorsal percutaneous screw fixation? A2 fracture, stable fracture in selected individual, B2 fracture waist, B3 proximal pole, ideal indication, and also a delayed presentation. In some cases of B5, which is a community scaphoid, we'll show examples. Why headless compression screw? Because of the differential uh, pitch, as you draw, put the screw at the end, you have approximation of both fragments together, and that enables very good interfragmentary compression. Being headless, it doesn't cause any impingement, and it's got a high push apart strength. I had experience with Acutrax screw in the UK, but now currently using these three systems available in India, Zimmer, Synthes, and Arthrex headless screws. Why dorsal approach? Logic, number one, central screw in the mechanical axis of the scaphoid. There is not an oblique direction as in Ola. Second, it is good for the proximal pole. It is very difficult to reach this from the Ola approach to control. Third, no violation of trapezium, thereby the scaphotrapezial arthritis is prevented. As you described elegantly shown, the blood supply is the ola, and we are avoiding disturbance to blood supply. How I do? First thing first is to use the guide wires, place it, and you mark the projected trajectory of the uh, wire in AP lateral position, and mark this area where you have to do, that is between the third and the fourth compartment. You could make a small nick, make it entirely percutaneous, or you can make a little bit longer incision to see the tendon retract, and also do a joystick reduction. Uh, Dr. Josley described this method, full flexion of the wrist, to keep the forearm pronated and under deviation, you will see the scaphoid end on like this. And you do the joystick reduction if it is necessary, do percutaneous wiring technique to make it reduced. And occasionally, very occasionally, we might need to use the orthoscope to check the position. Once the guide wire is inserted, you push the guide wire distally, withdraw it. Now you do a proper AP view. While you are inserting, you'll do only the lateral view, but now you could do a full uh, view, AP, oblique, rotate. As, uh, as far as you are satisfactory, you then advance a screw back and then fix it with the compression screw. I'll show a couple of cases. First one is an 18-year-old lady, fell off a bike. This is sort of, a, uh, according to Randy's classification, is the proximal pole scaphoid. And that is the fixation with the synthesis screw. And that is uh, two weeks after fixation. Uh, for type of this fracture, we don't need to put any immobilization. We can give her a creep bandage and also to mobilize day two of the surgery. So this is the patient at two weeks after fixation. You could see the marking still there. And we have made a small transverse incision for cosmetic reasons because it's 18 year old girl. And that is a starting of range of movement at two weeks. Typically at six weeks, they get full range of movement. So second example of a displaced fracture in a 34 year old man fall from height. The 3D CT is given to you, but it is so misleading, you will not be able to see the difference. Very important message, go through the CT scan suit because of the oblique anatomy of the uh, scaphoid, you have to view every slice sagittal coronal. If you see in a coronal picture only off the scaphoid, that means it is a completely displaced to fracture, which is dis uh, in a different direction. So I decided to fix this. Uh, this is the surface marking I have made. A small, a slightly bit of longer incision made is here because I want to see the uh, extensor tendon and also want to use the wires for joystick reduction of the displaced fragments. This is the EPL tendon, third compartment is being retracted laterally. And then the fourth compartment tendon is retracted ulnar wise. And you will see the capsule. You make a small nick, longitudinal nick in the capsule. Once you do that, you put the uh, wire from the dorsal approach, you see the wrist completely flexed and pronated position. You don't need, you cannot do a, a lateral AP view now. Once you do the pass the wire distally, as you see here in the uh, clinical video, is it playing? Yeah, you could see the two wires being pushed distally across. 
Then this is the joystick wire being uh, holding the fracture. Now you do the screening, make sure you're satisfactory. Then you redraw, redraw the wire back dorsally and then measure it. The measurement is very important. It should be six millimeter from the length of the escape point because you want the screw is totally intraarticular screw to be buried proximally and distally. It should not be uh, too much uh, protruding. Once you do that, uh, you fix the with the screw. Take out all the wires and do a final screening, dynamic fluoroscopy screening. You see that with supinate, pronate, ulnar deviation, radial deviation, all movements you do to check the length of the screws and stability of the fixation. That is ulnar deviation and radial deviation being checked. Once you're happy, you can close the stage. And that is the patient that four weeks of follow up. And that is the uh, six months clinical postoperative result. So to summarize, uh, percutaneous fixation, uh, in my experience, is minimally invasive, high union rate, less or no POP, on a good range of movement, and early return to function. Pay meticulous attention to detail in fixation. I need a lot of patients doing this surgery. And I hope this uh, type of uh, mastery classes, conferences, will help you to uh, get into that direction. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.